In this video, we're going to be talking about significant figures, which I think is everyone's least favorite topic in chemistry because they're hard to keep track of and they can be a little confusing. But they're really important because when you make a measurement, you need to know what that measurement represents. It's not just a number. Take a look at these three balances. We have balance one, balance two, and balance three. And I want you to look at and try to determine which of these balances is the most precise. Well, the answer is the last one. Um, the last one is the most precise and probably the most expensive. It measures out the finest quantities and uh, more places past the decimal. So the first one measures one place past the decimal and the second one measures two, and this one measures four places past the decimal. Now let's compare the first one and the third one. Say we're measuring a rock and we put the rock on the balance and it measures 5.6 grams. That tells us that that rock, according to that balance, is 5.6 grams. Now let's say we put a rock or that same rock on the third balance and we get a result of 5.6000. Now in a math class, your math teacher would probably just tell you, uh, you can lop off the zeros, you don't need them, they're not uh, telling you any information. But in a science class, if that is a measurement, those zeros are important. Those zeros are telling you something. They are telling you what instrument you used and the precision of that instrument. So you used that expensive, very precise balance to measure that rock. It just happened that all of the numbers after the six are zeros. So you have to represent those zeros because those zeros tell you the precision of the instrument that you used. Those zeros are very important in a science class when you're representing a measurement. Those zeros, we'll call those zeros significant. Now let's take a look at some more precision related items. We have this beaker and this beaker is filled with water and we want to measure how much water is in this beaker. So um, it looks like it's between the 40 and the 50. So we know it's 40 something milliliters and I'm just going to say it's 47 milliliters. I'm going to eyeball it and that last number I'm kind of just saying, all right, it's 47. Someone else could say it's 48. Someone else could say it's 46, but I'm saying it's 47. Um, those numbers that I gave you for the, the volume of this water in the beaker, those numbers are different in the sense that one of those numbers is an estimated digit. I'm sure you can figure out which one it is. The last one is an estimated digit because someone else could be could think or read that beaker as measuring something different in that last digit. Now the four is what we call a certain digit. We know, everyone would agree, that it's between the 40 and the water levels between the 40 and the 50. So that four is a certain digit and the seven is an estimated digit. Now let's take a look at a burette. Now I want you to measure the volume of water in this burette and tell me what that volume is and underline or identify the certain and the estimated digits. So burettes are a little tricky because they measure backwards because when you use them, you expel liquids from the burette rather than filling them up. So they kind of measure opposite. Now each uh, grade or each line is uh, represents 0.1 milliliters in this burette. So I have something from 20 point, I have 20.3 something. It's between the 0.3 and the 0.4. And I'm gonna eyeball it here and say that it's an eight. So I estimated that it was an eight and you may have estimated that it was a different number. So that is our estimated digit. I have 20.38, the eight is our estimated digit and the 20.3, those are my certain digits. Now, all of these numbers are significant, and we'll talk about what significant figures and digits are in the next um, portion, but all of these numbers are significant, even though some are estimated and some are certain. Now, which of these two volume measuring devices is the most precise? Well, the answer is the burette is the most precise because it measures the finest amounts of liquids and it measures more places past the decimal. So if we're just to look at a number, how do we tell which numbers are significant and which numbers are not? Now, there's a series of many rules 
Um, but just remember, they all go back to making measurements and representing measurements. So these rules can be tricky and uh, not fun to pay attention to, but they, they do represent something and they are important. And how you represent your measurements and how you deal with the numbers that you got when you measured something. So here are, here's rule number one. This is an easy one. All non-zero digits are significant. So if we have 524 or 1,639, all of these numbers, all of these digits in these numbers are significant. So 524 has three significant digits and 1,639 has four significant digits. All of the digits here are significant. So when we made these measurements, we knew um, we, we were able to measure out this far. Now the next set of rules deal with zeros. So rule number two, zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. So if we have 1,034, for example, there's a zero between the one and the three. That's a significant digit. And 5,806, there's a zero between the eight and the six that zero is also significant. So sometimes these are called sandwiched zeros, um, but they're significant. They're between two non-zero numbers. So 1,034 has four significant figures or four significant digits, and 5,806 has, also has four significant figures. Leading zeros are not significant. So they're the zeros before numbers. Um, and usually there's a decimal point involved here. So we have 0 0.006 and uh, 0 0.0000, lots of zeros, 97. Those numbers have lots of leading zeros that are not significant. So 0 0.006 has one significant figure or one significant digit, and um, the next number has two significant digits, the nine and the seven. On to the next rule, trailing zeros are significant in numbers with a decimal point. So this would be like that 5.6000 reading we had on that balance. They're significant because they tell us about the precision of our instrument. So 8.50, that zero is significant. Uh, 0 0.00300, those two zeros after the three are significant, but the Leading zeros before the three are not significant. All right, so 8.50 has three significant figures, and 0 0.00300 also has three significant um, figures. The two zeros after the three, but not any of the zeros before the three. This is a tricky rule, but it tells us that the zeros involved in precision are important zeros, and the zeros that are just placeholders are unimportant, non-significant figures. Now this last rule is the trickiest. Trailing zeros in a number without a decimal point are considered ambiguous. So if we have the number 30,000, we don't know if that person estimated to the nearest 1,000, 100, the nearest 10,000th place, or if they counted every single object and they happened to get exactly 30,000 to the ones place. Um, really, right now, we have one significant figure. But if we want to be specific about how many significant figures this number should have, all we need to do is throw in a decimal point. You can do this a couple different ways. You can represent it as scientific notation. So 3.0000 times 10 to the fourth would give us five full significant figures. Or sometimes, and this is pretty rare, um, sometimes people put a decimal at the very end of the number. That indicates that all of the numbers are significant. So say we counted something, uh, counted people in a stadium, and we counted to the nearest ones place, and just so happened that we got exactly 30,000, we would represent that as 30,000 with a decimal at the end of it. To, to tell the difference between that number and 30,000 where someone just estimated how many people were in a stadium and they don't know to the nearest one person how many people are in there, they just estimated 30,000. Well, in, this, in the 30,000 estimation, we'd get one significant figure. But in the 30,000 where we counted every individual person to the ones place, that would have five significant figures. So we have to represent that in a way where it's understood that all of those figures or all of those digits are important.